the MongoDB for VS Code extension is now generally available. There have been some amazing updates, so let me show you what it can do. At a high level, the extension allows you to navigate your databases, collections, and documents in MongoDB. You can get a quick overview of schemas and indexes. You can use playgrounds to aggregate and to write scripts. It's great at rapid prototyping. You can edit documents and save changes to the database. It has intelligent auto-completions. The MongoDB shell is built in, and you can even export queries and aggregations from your playgrounds to other programming languages right from inside VS Code. First, install the MongoDB for VS Code extension if you haven't already. You can search for MongoDB in the Extensions panel in VS Code or use the link in the video description. After installing it, go to the new MongoDB tab on your sidebar and let's connect to a database using our connection string. Now, if you need help setting up a new MongoDB Atlas cluster, take a look at this video, which is linked in the video description. You can also connect to a local or self-hosted MongoDB database. Now that we've connected, we can see all of the databases associated with this cluster. We can expand one of these and we can see the collections in it. This collection, for instance, has 24,000 documents. And we can quickly see how the documents are structured by looking at the schema. This is extremely useful when you're trying to build out a query since it lets you quickly identify which fields you can query and what the field types are. Now, the schema is inferred from a subset of the documents in the collection. You can also see indexes on each collection and even add indexes without leaving VS Code. This makes it easy to ensure that the query that you're writing is covered by an index. We can even open one of these documents right here in VS Code to get an idea of its structure and we could update and save the document back to the database if we wanted. And we can also easily see the different types of collections based on their icons. Here I have a time series collection alongside other regular collections. But one of the best features of this extension is the MongoDB Playgrounds. Playgrounds are JavaScript environments where you can run any MongoDB shell command, and they're really great to prototype queries and aggregations. Playgrounds also play nicely with JavaScript tools like ESLint and Prettier. So let's go ahead and create a playground. Now this is just a file and it comes with a template that shows examples of how to use the playground. So again, this is using standard shell commands. So here we're using the MongoDB VS Code Playground DB database. Now I don't currently have that database in this cluster. We can go over to the MongoDB tab and we can look at this cluster and see that it's not there. So when this playground is run, it will create this database for me. And next we're going to get the sales collection and then insert several documents. And then we're going to execute a find and then console log the sales count that occurred on April 4th, 2014. And then finally, we're going to execute an aggregation pipeline, which looks at all of the sales for 2014. And then we'll see the results for that. So let's go ahead and run this playground by clicking the play button in the top right. And then we're going to get a confirmation message that pops up. Now, this is going to run these commands on our actual cluster. So we do need to be careful. We'll go ahead and say yes here and we'll see the results. So we can see our console log here that there were two sales. And then we can see the results of our aggregation, which shows all of the sales. And now let's say that we want to actually implement what we've written here in another language. The MongoDB for VS Code extension makes that really easy. Now, all you have to do is select the bits that you want to convert to another language. For example, I want this aggregation pipeline here. Now I can open up the command palette and then search for MongoDB extract. And you can see I can choose from Node.js, C Sharp, Python 3, Java, Ruby. So I'm going to select Java and I'm going to get the Java code now that I can use in my Java application. That's so cool. Now the playground template is nice to have when you're first getting started, but what if you want to just start off with a blank template? Well, we can disable the template in the VS Code settings. In settings, search for playground and then uncheck the MongoDB use default template for playground. Let's go ahead and create a new playground now and this one will be blank. So I'm gonna start out by using the sample restaurants database, which is part of the sample data that you can load from the Atlas dashboard. Let's do a simple find on the restaurants collection. And notice the intelligent autocomplete built into the extension. As I'm typing, it knows the available collections for the database. And then as I type find, it shows the available methods and even some extra information about the method and a link to the MongoDB documentation. Very convenient. So let's run this. So we can see that this collection contains restaurants, their addresses, the cuisine type, grades, and of course their names. So we could use this data to find restaurants within a certain geographic area. 
So let's look for restaurants near the MongoDB New York office. So I'm going to define the geo coordinates for the MongoDB office. And then we're going to add an aggregation and use the dollar geo near operator. And notice again, the built in autocomplete has given me all of the parameters for the dollar geo near operator. So we're going to define the field where the distance is going to be stored. We'll call that distance. The max distance, we'll say 100. And we're going to use spherical geometry. Now, before we run this, we have to make sure that we have a geospatial index set up for this collection. So we can really quickly go over to the MongoDB tab in VS Code and look at the indexes and see if there's an index set up yet. And we can see that there isn't one. So let's go ahead and create one. Just to the right of indexes, we can click the plus button and we'll be given a new playground with a template to create an index. Now this template contains all of the available properties to create an index for the restaurant's collection. So we could create a normal index, a wildcard index, a column store index, text index, geospatial index, or a hashed index. And of course, all of the other available options. So for this, we just want a geospatial index. So let's copy this bit here. We'll paste it up at the top. And the location field is going to be address.coord. And we know that because if we go over to the MongoDB tab again, and we go over to our schema for this collection, we can see addresses and then coord. So let's go ahead and run this index playground. And then we can refresh our collection and we can see our new index here. Let's go back to our other playground with our geo near aggregation and let's run this. And now we can see that we have a good bunch of restaurants that are very close to the office. Now to make this even more awesome in MongoDB playgrounds, you can actually use any NPM package. You can use any of the native Node.js modules without any further configuration like the FS module for the file system. But to use other modules or packages, these will need to be installed in a specific directory locally. Now there's an article linked in the description with those directories. I'm on Windows, so in my terminal, I'm gonna navigate to my user directory and then run npm install Axios. We're going to use the Axios package in our MongoDB playground. So I wanna show you how we can enrich an existing collection using playgrounds and npm packages. Back on the MongoDB tab, I have the sample inflix database from our sample data as well. And when we look at the schema for this, for the movies collection, we see cast, countries, directors, genre, IMDB, languages, plot, ratings. But there's one thing that's missing. There's no movie posters. So let's use the OMDB API, the Open Movie Database API, to get movie posters for movies that we already have in our sample inflix database. Now this API does require an API key, but you can get one of those for free and they have a generous quota for testing. First, we'll require the Axios package, and then we're going to create a helper function to get the movie poster from the API. Then we'll need to be sure that we use the sample inflix database. After that, we'll define a very simple aggregation that's just going to get the first 10 movies from the collection. Then we're going to loop over those movies and we're gonna surround this loop with an async iffy. We'll get the title, we'll construct the URL, and then we'll get the movie poster from the API. And lastly, we'll enrich our collection by updating that document that has the same ID. And we're going to set the poster equal to the movie poster URL that we receive from the API. Lastly, let's run that aggregation again on the first 10 documents. This time we're just going to project the title and the poster. And let's just verify that the URLs for the posters were added. So let's run this. And now we can see the posters for all of these documents are there. If we go back to the MongoDB tab and we refresh the schema for the movies collection, we can now see poster as a field in the schema. Now, did you know that you can also use the MongoDB shell right inside VS Code 2? One important note here, you do need the MongoDB shell installed on your machine and have configured your path environment variable to include the file path to your shell binary. Now, for more information on how to do that, there is an article linked in the video description. So let's run that last playground aggregation in the MongoDB shell. So in VS Code, open up the command palette and search for MongoDB launch MongoDB shell. Now let's make sure that we are using the correct database. So we'll type use and then sample inflix. And now we can paste in that aggregation 
and run it. And we can see the exact same results as we had from our playground. It's really nice to have all of these MongoDB tools all in one place. Did you know you can also automate your Atlas infrastructure with Terraform? You can. And with VS Code, we make it easy by providing a template to help you get started. You will need to have Terraform installed on your computer, of course, and then create a new file named main.tf. In this file, just start typing Atlas and you're gonna see this template pop up. Hit enter and all of the information that is needed is provided as placeholders. And you can just tab through these and replace them. So the first placeholder is the project name and then I can hit tab and now I can enter the cluster name and hit tab. Now I can choose the cloud provider and so on. And then we give you all of the hints that you need to set up your region and cluster size. And now you can run this through Terraform and you'll have your Atlas infrastructure ready to go. So what do you think? Give this video a like if it was helpful. As you can see, the MongoDB for VS Code extension is a powerful tool with tons of features that can boost your productivity and make your MongoDB experience smoother and more efficient. Now, it's your turn to try it out. Remember, you can find the MongoDB for VS Code extension in the VS Code extension panel or use the link provided in the video description. Start exploring your databases, running shell commands, using playgrounds, export your queries to different programming languages, and automate your Atlas infrastructure with Terraform. We'd love to hear your feedback. What do you like? What can we improve? Your input can help shape the future of this tool. So please share your experiences and suggestions in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more MongoDB tutorials, tips, and tricks.